How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday, 947 a.m. local time in California here. May 7th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 3.2 earthquake across Southern California right now. There in the green flag, a little bit of uptick here starting around the West Coast and the Alaska region overnight. Let's go ahead and check out uh, the earthquake there in question, a 3.2 on the Malibu Coast Fault. Been a little quiet out there recently, but uh, looks like things are starting to pick back up. That earthquake did show up quite nicely there. I believe that's going to be the Malibu one on the uh, Barrett Station, also Anza. Uh, but as well, we got a couple other earthquakes showing up roughly around the same time frame here of the 3.2 around Malibu, just uh, further to the southeast here. So things uh, increasing in terms of earthquake activity out here. We noted that movement up here across the San Francisco Bay Area last night. Things are starting to adjust. I always say these quiet spells that last for a week or so really don't stay all that quiet for long, but uh, things are starting to pick back up out here. Uh, for that 3.2 earthquake, uh, not a big one, right? But it is something that's probably felt out there. And it's been a little, uh, a couple weeks or so since we've felt any earthquakes in Southern California region. A few folks reporting that earthquake this morning. A number of quake, or a number of folks are reporting uh, some shaking being felt from that 3.2. Uh, looks like that occurred at about eight miles deep here. Uh, looks like it may be actually on the Santa Monica fault here. Malibu Coast Fault uh, sits just a little further to the north. Uh, but, uh, yeah, some activity stirring up there right now. The Anza Quake down here, 2.2, that uh, is just off the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Got, uh, again, a number of quakes out here in the last hour. Uh, for 2.5 and above, that's going to be the first one here today. But I think things are going to get rolling here with the earthquake uh, earthquake department soon. Lots of smaller quakes around Southern California as well, aside from these ones coming in in the last hour, scattered all over the place, even up around the Ridgecrest area. For the San Francisco region here, uh, all of these from yesterday. We just had a, uh, a little time period there yesterday where things were on the uptick across the San Francisco Bay area, across the Hayward Fault, Calaveras Fault, the Greenville Fault, uh, even close to the San Andreas Fault here. We're still showing... Uh, was showing uh, a little bit of uh, uptick in earthquake activity. Overnight, though, looks like uh, nothing new to report across that region. It's all down south right now. Uh, there's that 2.6 outside of Dunnigan from yesterday. Uh, Northern California, a handful of smaller quakes, but really nothing big going on. Pacific Northwest, roughly about the same. Uh, further movement up across the Alaska area with a 4.1 earthquake coming in this morning. That... Uh, is a I don't know how many fours we've had up there in, in the past week or so, but it's been uh, quite numerous. Let me bring up the last seven days here of activity across the Alaska region. Bring it down to 2.5. Quite active out here across the Aleutian Trench in the last seven days there. This is a 2.5 map and above. A uh, lot more movement here than normal, but uh, it is a major subduction zone, so they can see you know, some decent earthquake activity when things decide to get rolling out here. We can continue to watch that, though, because I think this may be leading to some further larger adjustment. Uh, one area that's lacking some earthquake activity, the seismic gap zone, is across uh, this area back here, across this area of the uh, Lucian Trench. So watch that closely. There's some movement further up north into northern Alaska as well uh, today. Uh, across the Texas area, things lighten up out here as well in the oil fields. North American Plate on the move. A uh, bunch of twos out here today in the new Madrid Seismic Zone. One earthquake uh, this morning, 1.9. That uh, brings up the total tally here within the area to about nine earthquakes around the new Madrid Seismic Zone. The majority of them right smack dab there in the Hazard Zone of the new Madrid seismic zone that's uh, capable of producing upper seven magnitude earthquakes in the last series of large events like that were back in 1811, 1812, 2.8, 2.6, and a number of other quakes here uh, in the last week. Virginia region, three pointer from yesterday. That is in the red because 
Quite a few folks felt that earthquake outside of Richmond. Nothing new to report overnight there. As far as the world view goes, see if we got anything uh, spectacular going on here. Definitely noticeable out here across the West Coast. Uh, Middle America Trench active, but this is very common. A lot of older quakes from yesterday. Looks like it's our turn here along the West Coast for some uptick. Uh, let's see here. The rest of the area. Got some movement over here across the Java Trench, it looks like. 5.3 making its way up north here around the Sumatra area. Slight increase in the earthquake counts there across that region. Japan, uh, got a couple more earthquakes up there around the Nankai Trough this morning, it looks like. Uh, only one showing up here on the USGS map from last night. But as you can see, a handful of earthquakes just southwest here of that subduction zone that I've been chatting about here for a little while. Um, Iceland starting to stir up north in the rift boundaries. 4.6 and a 3.6 up there. That should get things going with the volcanoes eventually once again. Uh, speaking of volcanoes, I believe... Let's go over here and check out the Kilauea Volcano. Went into an active stage here yesterday. Uh, let's go over here and check out the webcams here real quick at the summit. Looks like things have died down, though. Uh, maybe it was late last night, overnight hours. I got a notification there from the USGS that uh, things were uh, starting to kick up. So a recent update here that was put out yesterday late in the night. 10.30 p.m. Hawaii time. Uh, looks like episode 20 ended after 4.5 hours of sustained fountaining. Uh, fairly spectacular fountaining going on from Kilauea Volcano with uh, some reaching more than 500 feet in the air. That is crazy. Uh, but it was a short-lived eruption here. So let's see what's going on here with the deformation data. Yeah, so this here is the last week. Notice the inflation leading up to the eruption uh, late last night, or l uh, yesterday. Fairly sharp deflationary event because of that uh, the volume of magma that was uh, shooting out. Lava, uh, the lava fountaining. So this was, uh, this was a fairly short duration, though, in terms of the accumulation leading up to the eruption. So that's little interesting, but uh, rinse and repeat cycle continuing with some variations, but nothing uh, of abnormal activity for now. So we'll watch that, see how that behaves as far as the uh, returning inflation goes. Uh, 2.9 Australia, New Zealand area, pretty quiet for now. Uh, look at the space weather activity. A prominent eruption did blast off uh, from the northeastern section of the sun uh, yesterday. Looks like that uh, eruption, though, of plasma is heading off to the northeast away from the planet. Beautiful image there. And that's a massive amount of plasma. Had that been directly Earth-directed, you know, Earth it would uh, produce some decent uh, auroras there in the coming nights. But right now, uh, fairly quiet. There is a G1-class storm scheduled, or forecasted, I should say, uh, for the May 9th time period. That is due to a coronal hole that's been facing us up here, number 46, right here. Uh, it's a little south, though, pointed south there of the Earth-Sun plane. I don't think we're going get, to get much out of that. Flaring continues to remain fairly non-eventful. Uh, even though we have this massive sunspot area here, 4079, it is not in a state of magnetic complexity. It's just sitting there, uh, you know, looking massive. But it really hasn't done much at all. And it continues to drift further out here across the western limb. It will be out of sight, out of mind here in a couple days. Uh, only sunspots worth noting maybe is this area down here. But even today, this is starting to look a little ragged. Uh, not a whole lot of complexity. There is some compared to these others, but we'll continue to watch that one. That's going to be 4082 down there. Uh, but really nothing, nothing of uh, any major interest going on here for potential strong flaring these guys showing a five percent chance for x flare i'm issuing a one percent or less 45 percent chance for m flare is probably reasonable uh let's see here anything major going on on the asteroids here any any close approaches let's go ahead and check it out here real quick 
Got uh, a number of asteroids out here. Nothing of any spectacular close fashion uh, drive-by, so to speak. 228, 228,000 miles for a 20-foot bus size asteroid. But uh, even then, that's fairly safe. Nothing major going on there in that department. Severe weather outlook today takes a, um, a slight possibility here out there across the uh, southeast marginal risk for some severe weather really nothing big coming up uh, for now got to, looks like a little bit of wind some hail threats out there over the next couple days but i don't see anything of any uh, major value out there for now seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet we'll keep an eye there on the west coast uh, and i say that because things are starting to light up out here across the north american continent Last night, we noticed that uh, San Francisco activity and inland as well. There's a lot of movement here. Let's go check out Yellowstone. I just go go figure every time I uh, skip Yellowstone, there's some type of swarm going on there. <laughs> Let's see real quick what we got for the Yellowstone overview. Holy moly. Look at that. Now that is earthquake activity. <laughs> That's not wind events. That's a lot of earthquakes. What's going on there? Holy smokes. So that is a spitter spatter event, I like to call them. Because that's just Yellowstone spitting out a bunch of earthquakes in a rapid amount of time all at once. Uh, I can guarantee you there's more than 31 earthquakes. So that's what the USGS is reporting there. Uh, north of West Yellowstone. But look at that. That is crazy amount of of uh, earthquake activity. There's probably 30 earthquakes on one line alone. One of these uh, seismograph station lines here. So there's a... Uh, ooh, man. I, I don't know. It could be close to 200 earthquakes in here. Uh, USGS is going to have fun with that, picking those out. It is uh, outside the Yellowstone Caldera. The Yellowstone Caldera supervolcano is right there in the black line. Um, looks like the epicenter may be around Maple Creek here. This one's well defined. You can see a lot of the earthquakes. Now remember, even though the USGS is only showing 30, that's just the ones that they can accurately uh, pick out here. But every single one of these small little spikes there are earthquakes as well. And I guarantee you there's a couple hundred in here. Looks like that stirred up uh, around midnight last night. Had a couple there in the day. Things really kicked up. Looks like they're... Uh, Still going to this hour, not as intense as the uh, earthquake activity out here overnight, about 4 or 5 in the morning. But uh, that's what earthquake activity looks like, and that's a lot of them. They are small microquakes, right? They're, I don't even think we had anything above 2.5. Let's double check here. Yeah, they're all below even the 2.0 the two threshold. Uh, but nonetheless, there's still earthquakes. They're showing up there across some, uh, the majority of the northwestern area of the park. Not so much across the other areas. It normally takes a 2.0 or above to show up on some of these other seismograph stations. But I believe that's fault-related. Um, not stress or strain due to magma building underneath the area. Uh, this region is fractured with a whole bunch of fault systems. Uh, of course, Hebgen Lake area, right? Remember... They had a, a big, huge seven-pointer back in, um, oh, I don't remember the exact date, uh, 60s or somewhere around there, uh, 70s maybe. But uh, hard to say exactly which fault system this is occurring on. A couple unnamed faults in the Hepkin Lake Basin. But again, the Yellowstone Caldera sits um, right here in the black line. So that activity is happening outside of that region to the northwest here. But interesting. We'll uh, definitely have to watch that. Um, I will have to probably reset this system here, the uh, earthquake seismograph viewers, because last time I tried to get Yellowstone stations up here, I could not get it. So um, have to reset this system here in order to um, have access to some of those seismograph stations around the area. But with an ongoing swarm, probably a good idea. Um, yeah, that's a decent spitter spatter event right there for sure. All right, um, and it and it I believe it's fault system related because there's just so much earthquake activity happening around uh, the states here, the North American 
uh, continent. You, you know, oil fields are kicking up. Southern California on the move. New Madrid seismic zone all throughout Nevada. Uh, it only makes sense here as the uh, North American plate moves, and, and which it does. It moves off to the northwest or west northwest here. You can see it on the map. Uh, portion of it general plate movement of the pacific plates to the northwest the north american plate here kind of has a certain areas north northwest and then it kind of stirs back up over here uh, in a different position to the south the southwest area it varies right the plates are always just going to be warped and move uh, at certain different positions here but uh, with things on the move Got to watch the West Coast out here and obviously Yellowstone, but, I, you know, not magma related here. It's fracture areas up there. Just let me show you guys. Well, they don't really have a lot of GPS stations here in this area. Uh, I guess this West Yellowstone's here, so the swarm's happening in this region. They got the majority of the uh, GPS stations in the Yellowstone caldera, but uh, West Yellowstone... I don't see any signs of uptick in terms of inflation. If anything, there's a little bit of deflation going on here in the last uh, year or so. Hebgen Lake Estates, that is offline. This one's going up a little bit slowly, but surely. But that's a ways away from the uh, caldera back over here. That one's got a little uptick back in 2024, but most recently downtrending. So anyway, I got to get going, folks. Um, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, if anything changes out here as far as any elevated earthquake activity, of course, we'll jump on here. Uh, again, keep an eye on Southern California. You're lighting up like crazy out here. Take a screenshot of that. Got a little triangle um, event starting to take place once again, similar to what we had um, last year when we seen a bunch of fours, the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, Malibu, and the area down here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. So watch for some uptick here today across Southern California, the Bay Area included. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on, folks. Have a good day. Stay safe out there.